That's the real star. You knew that was going to happen. That's why, that's why I hate you. Uh, Jonathan right there is with our football creative uh, side of things. And then Clay does a lot of publications and graphic design as well. So we, we want to know what we're doing well, what, can we, what we can do better. What are you seeing across the country? And then we'll probably hit you with yeah. some questions. You guys do great work. And whether it was off the bat when we announced our partnership, some of the cool stuff I saw you do with coaches and players um, to talk about how important it is to you to create first class content but also to get it to the players, get it to the coaches, and really try to you know, set yourselves apart. And of course, every single time we always get, well, what can we do better? What can we do more? But I truly, and I don't say this for a lot of my clients, so don't think this is a running thing, but you guys truly took this first year um, and ran with it the way that you needed to. I don't know how many times we saw the post on July 1st, but it had to be at least 100 where you saw athletes post this black screen with text on it and it said the NCAA has decided to allow student athletes to make money off of their name image and likeness and I want you to know that my DMs are open for business right nothing really changed except the opportunity became available right like did anybody wake up as a student athlete with a bunch of money in their bank account on July 1st like no right you got to take initiative and I'll also say too because I think this um, especially for this group is really important so like you just said 56,000 um, content was uploaded in the system, but 36,000 of it was downloaded, which is huge. So just know that the work that you're doing is actually impacting them. What we do is so important do. because it sets them up for like the future, like not playing, but just like in life. Teaching them how to have a good personal brand is setting them up for success. Like, I actually think this is the area where we can differentiate ourselves because we're not going to rely on the traditional things that everyone else has. And so we've developed a storytelling strategy like that, where, hey, we're going to be there when you're like playing with kids at the Pistol Pete party or whatever. And that's the stuff that like we can use to set ourselves apart. That is temporal. It's not eternal. So how can you leverage this stage while you're on it to set the stage for the rest of your life? Yeah, maybe you'll realize your dream and play pro ball, five, six, 10 years and make some money both with your NIL, but also with a contract. But regardless, you're not gonna play forever. So how can you build a brand that's hireable and is able for you to build a career off of? That's what I care about. But here's the biggest misconception I've seen since NIL started. Anybody post this? It's okay. This post was just blatant across the country on July 1st. My DMs are open for business. As if, because a new rule was passed, on July 2nd, money would show up in your bank account. It's not that simple. This is the biggest misconception, and it's something that hundreds and hundreds of student athletes bought into when they heard NIL was coming. You have to get playing time, get on the field or court, make moments, win games as a team, all that matters. But you also have to take initiative. There's a lot you have to do to help people understand who you are more than an athlete. There's a reason LeBron coined that phrase. One of my closest friends won a Super Bowl with the Giants, and my favorite quote he has is if they talk about my Super Bowl at my funeral, I have failed in life. You're more than an athlete. That's just something that got you here. You're a human being with passions and a story that makes you unique. So how do you take initiative to get that out there and tell that story in a multi-dimensional way, way beyond just sports? And how do you also do it while you're working to be the best player you can be? This staff that Steven leads sent you 49,000 pictures and videos, of which 36,000 were downloaded or shared by you. What you're doing here is in like the top 5% of the schools we serve. I talked about some of the successes here, I mentioned AJ, but what he does that I wanted to shout out is this combination of athletic ability and personality together. And so consistent posting, more than you know, twice a week on average, you know, what that does is it creates interactions, 440,000 interactions on his social, and this is just his Instagram. Um, it also creates engagement, 15% in 
engagement. So anywhere between 15 and 20% is like the target for an athlete. Last six months, 67 posts, about two a week, 32,000 new followers, 127% growth in six months. AJ, I, I'm not trying to embarrass you and single you out, but you do you put some work into this? Through social media, I've always loved like posting. It's more interesting. I'm also very very vocal in the fitness industry. I lift a lot. I train with professional bodybuilders, powerlifters. So for me, it's just a passion I have. And I want to go. If I would have stopped wrestling, I'd want to go into the fitness industry. So for me, it's like I better be building my brand now, so that whenever I'm a personal trainer, whenever I'm whatever I do later on down the road, you know, I'm already ready for that. There's a great story on TikTok here. So Raquel took a trend and made it her own. Had more than seven million views and added ninety thousand followers like that, whether it's TikTok, whether it's a movement that's going on in society, how you can tap in to things going on, hashtags, content that you post, the voice that you have on it, and get yourself in front of a whole new audience. Kind of like when you go to the Explore tab on Instagram and something that's relevant, a topic at the time, if you create compelling content around it, you'll get boosted and people will see it. But we also wanted to build a way for you to find out about the best opportunities online to make money. And so the Influencer Exchange is a place, basically an app store, inside of the Influencer app. It's live now, it went live July 1st. But these are opportunities that I really believe are great for you. And so our dedication, we have a team dedicated to signing these partners and integrating them into our app so that you can learn about them and, and sign up if you want. Yeah, I like your shirt. You got it, I really man. appreciate it. Yes, no sir. doubt. Yep. I'll do it. I'll do it. To me, that's more important than going out trying to like start. You're gonna, you're gonna, if you're gonna turn pro, you're gonna get deals. You're gonna do that stuff. But how can you just start building the foundation and focusing on having the best golf season possible? Right. And and sharing more and letting people more into your journey as a golfer is gonna set that foundation. You're gonna make money. Yeah. I think for you, whatever you feel comfortable with, I would. What I would do is I would do calls. I would sign up for multiple and do setup calls and see which one can help you the best you need. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm Carson Sager. Yeah. Jim Cavell. Nice to meet you, Carson. And then I think this right here can grow into more that you don't know. So it's kind of like its own business. See, I like this too because for me, it's also making me more in the long run because it's building my brand. Yeah. So keep growing that and figuring out how so that works. I have a student who reached out to me. I'm thinking about time with the agent, but they take 20% of what you get. Yeah, I, I think it's a judgment that you're gonna have to eventually make a decision on. I would go as long as you can without it, but I think it's more of right now you're just getting started, so the agent has the leverage. But the more months of performance you have of making money and that money growing, the more you're gonna be able to leverage that with the agent in the negotiation around the percentage. Okay, you get your number though, for sure. Take a picture with you, I'll post on my story too. <laughs> oh, dude. He's some crazy Italian dude, the beast mode. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm from I'm from upstate New York, and his family's from Jersey. I know you you, you got him from Texas, but he's just he just reminds me of so many guys back home. Man, he's just such a he's just such a competitor. Yeah. You know, and yeah. uh, he goes, you see that national championship trophy? I walked in the room, all the other guys were in there going for it, and I said, let's come home with me, boys. And they looked at me, and nobody disagreed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, at Oklahoma State, we're gonna help you use this stage to set the stage for the rest of your life. And we're not just gonna do that with academics. We're not just gonna do that with the best facilities and one of the best conferences and stages to play on. We're gonna do that by helping you tell a story that fits into this tradition and helps you leverage this stage to build your own brand that might, deal, might, might equal NIL deals. But what I like most, and I see a lot of teams try to do it when, when coaches get involved, is making social media a we thing, not a me thing. Going back to my last example, we got the game ball to Jane Doe. Let's, you know, Jane, you're gonna have a special highlight video coming to you. Hey, when she shares it, y'all, let's make sure we reshare that. That's a big deal. You earned it, Jane, great job. Those are the things that I'm seeing coaches do when they do get involved. And it's something that a creative staff member could never do. We're getting verification. Everybody's telling us we're going to get verification. We're going to get this and that. And it's, that was nothing. I, I didn't talk about that one time throughout the 
recruiting process, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, once he once he commits here, then it's like, well, this is what we were promised. From other schools, can you do it, you know? Like, get good at basketball. Yeah. <laughs> like, all, I told him, like, all the good basketball players I know, they're verified on Twitter, on, on Instagram already, so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. That, their application was getting good. Yeah. yeah, right. Well, that's what I told the father, because if you're top 500 in the world in tennis, which a lot of college players will be in the top 500 even while they're in school, then ATP validates you. So right. I was just like, start winning a few more matches. He's going to be top 500, and then we're not having this discussion, you know? Appreciate y'all's time. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, very nice to meet you too. Where are you from? Uh, Syracuse. Okay. Yeah, originally, and I, I, I live in Birmingham, Alabama now. I'm still trying to figure this thing out. Well, what I love about you is, <laughs> I love what you, I agree with what you just said wholeheartedly. Like the whole, like, you want to do the application, just become yeah, a good basketball player. <laughs> thought the meeting last night went really good. What you already are selling is that we are going to develop you as a, you know, as a player, as a person, all of those things, and now this is just part of it. This is just a, another platform, another, you know, just a continuation of that. I think that was good to hear that group of coaches because I do, I think they do a great job of that. Before, you still could make money, but you're gonna have to wait until you left, and it might just be that you got a great job. How can we give student athletes, parents, what they want while still giving them what they But the core of it, the spirit of what it is about, I think is, is right. I mean, yeah, they should have the ability. I don't know that we should limit their ability to, to benefit off of their name, image, and likeness if done the right way and under the right circumstances, not being about inducement and recruiting. But once they're here, and if they want to do that, they should be like any other st student. If there was a really cool design of the student athlete life cycle, right? It would be like, you know, they get here, they become a cowboy or a cowgirl. What does that mean? You know, there's the, there's the grades and the, you know, they pick their major and they, they, they do an internship and, you know, they play for their team and learn the system and they train and, and develop themselves physically, right? And there's all these things they do. And one of them is they build their brand. Um, and there's a maybe in this life cycle where they, you know, they make some money with NIL. That's just a little, this is the little part that's probably even smaller in the life cycle than the other things. The big thing is at the end, and that is they're a leader and contributor to society with a career and a family and all these things. And that's still the goal. And if we can remind them of that with the life cycle and the blip of some money with NIL becomes that, totally changes the narrative. Before social media, before all this stuff, you built a brand. Everybody was building their brand, 100%. right? You did that. Yeah. You did that by working in the athletic department. That's how you got your first job. You wouldn't have got that job if you didn't do that as a student. That's right. I think that's true of you and every every student or every person, right? And on some level, yep. social media kind of has amplified, and you know, all of it. But so yeah, I think that was your message last night. Is you've been doing this. Yep. Now just make this part of it. Yep. Your wrestling coach last night taking notes was motivational for me. Like seeing him in there knowing this isn't his thing yeah. and he's still there like wanting to develop himself and he's the wrestling coach at Oklahoma State. Yeah. That's like a pretty prestigious <laughs> thing. I mean, that was that was cool. You got great people. This has been a great visit and- uh, Appreciate you being here. Yeah.